Why hello there lovely one, it's me Helen the Great and I've got a couple of number pattern questions over here so we're going to go through them. Now to save time I did count all of these questions that have diagrams in them so you don't have to watch me count the number of matches or there's number of matches as well um, so that we can speed things up. This says consider the diagram, how many dots will there be in the eighth triangle? How many triangles do we have at the moment? We've got one, two, three, four, so we still need to find five, six, seven, and eight. I'm sure you can agree it would take a long time to draw out all of those, so we're going to look for a mathematically faster way to do it. There are six dots in this first triangle, then there are ten dots. After that, there are 15 dots and then 21 dots. So what's the pattern over here? Well, from 6 to 10, we're adding 4. From 10 to 15, we're adding 5. From 15 to 21, we're adding 6. And this is where I'm going to call up my calculator because I want to find out the fifth term by adding 7 adding 7. So my fifth term is 28. Let's just write that down. We don't need it, but it just helps me to remember. Then I'm going to add 8, and my sixth term is 36. 36. Now let's do the seventh term. We add 9, and our seventh term is 45. And our eighth term is plus 10. I'm sure you know what 45 plus 10 is, but let's just prove it on the calculator. It's 55. So that means our eighth term, t of 8, equals 55. Remember that the t tells us the 8 is a term number. The term value is 55. The next question, consider the diagram, how many matches will there be in the eighth picture? Now once again, I have counted them already. In the first picture, I have 12. In the second picture, I have 19. In the third picture, it's gotten bigger again, I've got 26. And in the fourth picture, I have 33. So what's changing in each one? Over here, I'm adding 7. Does that pattern continue? Yes, I'm adding 7 again. And look, adding 7 again. So let's find out the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th term. Now I don't need to write them all down, so I'm not going to. I'm going to start with the 33 which is the fourth term, whoopsie, 33 plus 7 gives me the fifth term, plus 7 gives me the sixth term, plus 7 gives me the seventh term, and plus 7 gives me the eighth term. So term 8 has a value of, let's just look again, 61. Not so bad. Okay, the next question has matches. Obviously, there are four matches in the first image. In the second image, there are 16. In the third image, there are 28. It asks what number there will be in the seventh image. So what is the difference there? It's 12, and then 12 again. So that's my third. I've got to go through four, five, that's very untidy, sorry, six, and seven. Let's see. So clear my calculator, and we're adding 12 each time, so plus 12 takes me to four, plus 12 takes me to five, plus 12 takes me to six, and plus 12 takes me to 7. So my 7th term is 76. Write that down. 
term 7 is equals to 76. You ready for the next one? Well, let's go to it. Determine the next term in the sequence. This is easy. 1, 3, 5, 7. I'm sure you remember counting in grade 2, maybe even grade 1. We're doing all the odd numbers, so the next term is obviously going to be 9. That's a nice surprise, isn't it? Okay, the next question. Determine the next term in the sequence. This is more interesting. 1 is 1. 4 is 4. There's a 3 difference over there. 9 is 9, but now the difference between there is 5. 16 is 16, the difference between there is 7. So what's the next one going to be? Well, if we added 3, and then we added 5, and then we added 7, so what are we going to add now? 9. 9 will give us 25. The other way to do this is to recognize that they're all squared numbers. 4 is actually 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, and 16 is 4 squared. 25 is 5 squared. So the next term would be 36. That pattern does come up quite often. Oh, this one's a lovely one. I really like it. Determine the next term in the sequence. It's going to look terrible. But if we divide it up into A's, and just look at that as a pattern, we'll start with those. What's the difference between this and that? I've got A, and I need to get to 3A. How many A's am I adding? 2 A's. Now from 3A to 5A, how many A's am I adding? two of them. So 5a to 7a, I'm adding 2. So what's my next term going to be with a's? Well, 7a plus 2a gives us 9a. Let's now look at the b's. From 2b to 5b, that's 3b added. Then from 5b to 8b, look, it's also 3b. And from 8b to 11b, wonderful, it's also 3b, which means from 11b to our next term, we're going to add 3b, which gives us 14b. So not that complicated after all. Just divide it up into the a's and b's. The next one is also quite a common one. And if you look carefully, we'll see that they are actually cubed numbers. 1 is 1 cubed. 8 is 2 cubed. 27 is 3 cubed. I'm sure it's making you feel good. 64 is 4 cubed. So the next question is, what is 5 cubed? And I really hope you know that that is 125. Otherwise, you do have your calculator. That would work quite well. The next question. Determine the sixth term in the sequence. Let's look at it. 2 to get to 7, we're adding 5. From 7 to 12, we're adding 5. So now we've got to do the fourth term, the fifth term, and the sixth term is what we're actually looking for. So I'm going to get out my calculator and start with 12 plus 5 to get to my fourth term, plus 5 to get to my fifth term, and plus 5 to get to my sixth term, which means t6 is equals to 27. Let me just check that I've written it down correctly. I have. This one's a little bit more interesting. Determine the sixth term in the sequence. 
To get from negative 1 to 2, we've got to add 3. To get from 2 to negative 4, we've got to subtract 6. So we're not adding a number every time. Let me just get the eraser. We're doing something else. And remember, if the adding doesn't work, then try multiplying. Negative 1 times by 2, let's just make this a bit thicker. Negative 1 times by what gets us to 2? Well, how about negative 2? And 2 times by what gets us to negative 4? Also multiplied by negative 2. So that means our sequence is determined by what we're multiplying by. And we're multiplying by negative 2. Now we've got the third term. We need to look at the fourth term, then the fifth term, then the sixth term, and that's what we're actually looking for. So we're going to multiply by 2 multiple times. Let's take negative 4 times, oh, let's do it properly, times by negative 2 to get to our fourth term, times by negative 2 to get to our fifth term, and times by negative 2 to get to our sixth term, that's 32. So t of 6 equals 32. The last question now. Given a sequence with the variables p, q, and r, determine the values of these variables. Now this question I actually found in a grade 11 paper, but I just liked it so much that I thought you would be great at it. Now, to get from P to 18, we don't actually know how we're doing that. But from 18 to 28, it looks like we're adding 10. From 28 to 40, it looks like we're adding 12. From 40 to Q, we don't actually know. From Q to 70, we also don't actually know. But from 70 to 88, we're adding 18. We don't know what's happening between 88 and R. Now, at first, this does look a bit impossible. We can see that it's increasing by 2 over there, but we don't know what's happening over here and here. But here's the trick. We know that 1, 2, 3 steps later, we get to plus 18. So we can check if 12 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 gets us to 18. Let's see. 12 plus 2 is plus 14. Plus 14 plus 2 is plus 16. And what do you know? Plus 16 plus 2 takes us to 18 which makes us so much nicer, because we're going to add 2 to the difference, which means we're adding 20 to get from 88 to R. So what is R equal to? Well, it's equals to 108. How do I know that? Because I'm taking 88 and I'm adding 20 to it. Now, if there's a difference of 10 between 18 and 28, what will the difference between P and 18 be? It's going to be 8. So what is the value of P? Nice and easy, isn't it? P is equals to 10. That just leaves us with Q. From 44 to Q, we should be adding 14. So what is 44 plus 14? Once again, I hope you can do that in your head. 44 plus 14 is 54. See, not so bad. So in short, play with your number patterns and you'll do great. Much love.